Bedroom wiring, basic, compliant with National Electrical Code 2020, step-by-step -step guide. How to wire a bedroom. Step-by-step -step instruction. Bedroom wiring compliant with NEC, National Electrical Code, 2020. Basic bedroom wiring installation per NEC code 2020. After watching this video and doing electrical installation work based on it, with a little DIY skills, you will be able to install wiring in accordance with the requirements of NEC, National Electrical Code, 2020 in such a room. This video is a do-it-yourself guide to help you get your electrical work done safely and professionally. Always follow all safety rules and national, state and local laws. Electricity is dangerous. Errors can result in death or serious personal injury and property damage. Always to energize the circuit before doing any work on it. There are a few circumstances where it is necessary to work on live circuits with extreme safety precautions. If you are not comfortable with this job, hire a professional. Follow national, state, and local codes when wiring your home. NFPA, National Fire Protection Association, codes. NFPA 70 NEC, National Electrical Code. NFPA 1 Fire Code. ANSI, American Nationals Institute. ASHRAE, American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers. IES, Institute of Education Sciences, Code. ANSI, ASHRAE, IES 90.1 Energy Standard for Buildings. Steps before starting wiring. Most municipalities require a permit for most types of construction. Do it right and get permission from your local building department and ask about all the requirements for the job to be done properly and safely. Ask about all required inspections. Usually, an inspection is required for rough in wiring and a final inspection after job is done. To get permission you need to complete an application and draw up a plan, if you don't have an architect and submit it to the building department for a review. The electrical plan should show how the bedroom will be wired. The bedroom wiring will be shown under the following conditions. A brand new bedroom in a new home, or a new added room in an existing house, or a gutted room with the old electrical installation removed. The bedroom has two windows, one entrance door and one wardrobe with sliding doors. The bedroom has typical wiring required by the NEC, National Electrical Code, Fire Code, Energy Code and other local codes. In the bedroom, the codes require Receptacles Switched light outlet with switch at the entrance Smoke detector in the bedroom Carbon monoxide, smoke detector located within 10 feet of the bedroom. Typical medium-sized bedroom 14 feet by 13 feet which has a clothes closet with sliding doors, two windows and a hinged entrance door. It is a brand new room or completely gutted. An electrical plan will be drawn for this room. HVAC air supply vents already installed. Examples of bedroom wiring plans that need to be sketched for the construction department to meet legal requirements. Symbols commonly used on electrical plans that need to be known to draw a plan. To draw a plan, you need to know the basic code rules. Placement of the receptacles. No more than 6 feet from any openings in the wall doors, fireplaces, etc. The distance between the receptacles cannot be greater than 12 feet. Any wall space 2 feet or more in width. At least one lighting outlet controlled by a listed wall-mounted control device. 
Smoke alarms should be installed in all sleeping rooms, outside of each separate sleeping area, in the immediate vicinity of the sleeping rooms, and on each level of the dwelling unit, including basements. Carbon monoxide alarms or carbon monoxide detectors shall be installed outside each separate sleeping area of a dwelling unit, in the immediate vicinity of bedrooms, on each level of use of the dwelling unit, including basements, excluding attics and crawl spaces. Example 1. Electrical and fire protection installations in bedrooms required by law. Light outlet in the middle of the room is the most common type of lighting installation that meets the requirements of the lighting standard. Duplex receptacles. Switchable center light outlet. Smoke detector in the bedroom. Carbon monoxide and smoke detector near the sleeping area. Example 2. Electrical and fire protection installations required by law in bedrooms, blade fan, light outlet in the middle of the room as an alternative type of lighting installation that meets the requirements of the lighting standard. Duplex receptacles, switchable fan with light outlet, smoke detector in the bedroom, carbon monoxide and smoke detector near the sleeping area. Example 3. Electrical and fire protection installations required by law in bedrooms, recessed lighting fixtures as an alternative type of lighting installation that meets the requirements of the lighting. Standard. Duplex receptacles. Switchable recessed light outlet. Smoke detector in the bedroom. Carbon monoxide and smoke detector near the sleeping area. Example 4. Electrical and fire protection installations required by law in the bedrooms, receptacle controlled by a switch as an alternative type of lighting installation that meets the requirements of the lighting standard. Duplex receptacles. Controlled receptacle outlet. Smoke detector in the bedroom. Carbon monoxide and smoke detector near the sleeping area. If the municipality does not require an architect's plan, a plan similar to the examples above should be prepared and submitted to the building department for approval. After obtaining the permit, work can begin. The bedroom wiring shown in this video will be based on the plan in example 1. Electrical and fire protection installations in bedrooms required by law. Light outlet in the middle of the room is the most common type of lighting installation that meets the requirements of the lighting standard. The bedroom is ready for wiring according to example 1. Tools needed to do this job. Any drill with drill bits. Fillip bit. Side cutting pliers. Diagonal cutting pliers. Wire stripper. Flathead screwdriver Marker Hammer Small level Tape measure Any ladder Materials needed for this bedroom for rough and wiring 14 2nm cable 14 3nm cable Receptacle, switch junction box Ceiling lighting junction box acceptable for fan support. Wire nuts. Staples. Nail plate, may be needed. Materials needed for this bedroom for the final finishing of the wiring. Duplex receptacles. Single pole switch. Wall plates. Smoke detector. Carbon monoxide detector AFCI circuit breaker or AFCI receptacle Box extender, may be needed Button type cable connector, may be needed Measurement and marking of the room for electrical installation devices Bedroom wiring according to example 1 Plan from Example 1 Receptacle installation and distances Receptacle outlets can be installed at preferred locations along the wall, but code requirements must be met. 
no more than six feet from any openings in the wall, doors, fireplaces, etc. The distance between the receptacles cannot be greater than 12 feet. Any wall space 2 feet or more in width. Receptacle cannot be located more than 5 and a half foot above floor level. If the distances cannot be maintained on the walls, glass walls, railings, etc., receptacle must be installed in the floor no more than 18 inches from the wall, not apply for this room. Marking the location of the receptacle outlets. Measure the room and pre-mark the location of the receptacle outlets, according to the previously described rules. If necessary, adjust the distance of the receptacle outlets, install more outlets, but do not increase the distances described in the codebook. Measure the distance from the floor and mark the bottom of the box on the previously pre-marked stud for placing the receptacle outlet box. 14 inches is the most common distance from the floor to the bottom of the receptacle outlet box. 14 inches from the floor to the bottom of the receptacle outlet box. Repeat marking for other receptacle outlets boxes. The location of the receptacle outlet is already pre-marked. Marking the location of the switch. Pre-mark the location of the switch outlet. Measure the distance from the floor. And mark the bottom of the box on the previously pre-marked stud for placing the switch outlet box. 44 inches is the most common distance from the floor to the bottom of the switch outlet box. 44 inches from the floor to the bottom of the switch outlet box. Marking the location of the light outlet. Measure the room. Mark the center of the room for the surface mount luminaire, light fixture, on the ceiling. Marking the location of the smoke detector and carbon monoxide, smoke detector. HVAC air supply vents. Ceiling suspended paddle fan. Smoke detector. Carbon monoxide, smoke detector. Requirements for installing a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide, smoke detector on the ceiling. The smoke detector in the bedroom shall be installed in the center line of the door. No closer than 12 inches and no more than 60 inches from the door. At least 4 inches from the wall at least 3 feet from the air supply register. Minimum 3 feet from the nearest point of the fan, blades. Carbon monoxide, smoke detector. A carbon monoxide, smoke detector must be installed within 10 feet of the sleeping area. All other installation requirements are the same as for the smoke detector. Marking the location of the smoke detector and carbon monoxide, smoke detector on the ceiling. Mark the location of the smoke detector in the room and the carbon monoxide, smoke detector outside the room. Installation of junction boxes. Many different junction boxes are available to suit this installation. In this example, two types of boxes have been selected that are best suited for this wiring. A non-metallic, nailed Carlin 22.5 cubic inch junction box was selected for the receptacle outlets, switches and alarm detectors. As a light outlet in the middle of the room commercial electric 12 cubic inch a non-metallic junction box rated to support fans was selected. Installation of junction boxes for receptacle outlets and switch. A single gang Carlin 22.5 cubic inch or similar junction box can be used as the outlet box for receptacles, switch and alarm detectors. 
Front view of a single gang Carlin Junction box. Side view of a single gang Carlin Junction box. Details of non metallic, nail on single gang junction box. This box requires a wall depth of at least 3 inches. The cable entering this Carlin Junction box must be attached to a stud within 12 inches of the box. Box size, volume in cubic inches 22.5 cubic inch. The maximum number and size of wires that can fit in a box, making it easy to calculate. Each insulated wire counts as one. All uninsulated bare wires as one. Each device, socket, switch, etc. as two. Example. The number 11 slash 14 on the box indicates that the junction box holds 11 of 14 AWG. American wire gauge, size wires. Example of counting for three cables 14, 2 NM, Romex. Three white and three black wires 3 plus 3 equals 6. Three bare ground wires like one. One receptacle, switch, etc. to be installed as two. Total equals 9. This means the box can fit one more 14. Two cable to get maximum allowable capacity. This means that the box holds a total of 4 14, 2 NM cables and one device. Knockout for the cable entry in the junction box. Nails for mounting the junction box. One half inch mark for standard house walls sheetrock thickness, one half inch thick sheet. Markings for different wall finish thicknesses. Mounting holes for electrical devices. To install a nailed junction box. Hold the junction box on the side of the stud and align the bottom of the box with a marking sign on the stud. While holding the junction box at side of the stud. Drive the nails of the box into the stud. When attaching the junction box to the stud, the marking on the box for one half inch sheetrock must evenly touch the stud. After measuring and marking the entire room, fasten the junction boxes to the studs. Receptacle junction box installed. Switch junction box installed. If necessary, add a piece of wood to move the junction box further away from any wall element door trim, wall corner, etc. to make enough space for wall plate installation. Vapor tight junction boxes for external walls may be required to meet energy code requirements. Installation of the junction box for the light outlet. Install the ceiling light outlet junction box. The outlet box mounted on the bedroom ceiling in a location acceptable for a suspended paddle fan installation must be rated as acceptable for fan support. Commercial electric 12 cubic inch. A non-metallic junction box, acceptable for fan installation, selected for this type of installation, center of the beam. Acceptable for fan support. Screw that secures the junction box to the joist. Screws securing the fan or lighting fixture, direct mounting to the joist. Button type cable connector. Holes in the junction box for screws mounting the luminaire. Cable knockouts. Junction box cover. A ceiling light outlet junction box has been installed. Installation of junction boxes for alarm detectors. Install the junction boxes for the smoke detector and carbon monoxide smoke detector. Any junction box of the device as well as any ceiling box that can accommodate wiring, can be used to install the detectors. The most popular boxes used for smoke detectors when wiring new building structures. 4 inches PVC round ceiling light box. 1 gang switch, receptacle box, selected. Install the smoke detector outlet box. 
Install the carbon monoxide smoke detector outlet box. Alarm detector junction box mounted in the ceiling. Cable installation. Drilling holes. The cable can be routed through any drilled hole, but certain rules of the NEC and other building codes apply. Holes for routing cables through wall studs can be drilled at any horizontal stud height, but are typically located approximately 30 inches to 40 inches above the floor in each stud along the wall if needed. Side view, wider, of 2 by 4 stud and details of drilled holes. The drilled hole should be no larger than 7 eighths inch, usual drill bit size, can be smaller but not less than 1 half inch. The edge of the hole should be no closer than 1 and a quarter inch from the edge of the stud. Drilled hole. 1, 16 inch thick steel nail plate. If the edge of the hole is less than 1 and a quarter inch from the edge of the stud, Secure the hole with a 1, 16-inch thick steel nail plate of the appropriate length. For holes greater than 7 eighths inch in diameter, a steel plate must be used on both sides of the stud. Cable protection with a nail plate. If necessary, multiple holes can be drilled according to hole drilling rules. In wider studs, the hole may be larger, any stud can be drilled or bored no more than 60% of the width of the stud. The hole is no closer than 5 eighths inch from the edge of the stud, and the hole is not in the same section as a notch or cut. The cable must be protected by a steel plate if the edge of the hole is less than 1 and a quarter inch from the edge of the stud. Stud in any external or load-bearing wall may be notched but not deeper than 25% of the width of the stud. The cutout with the cable must be protected with a steel plate. The cutout must not be in the same place where the hole is drilled. For the top and bottom plates, the same drilling rules apply as for studs. The top plate of the stud wall. Holes may be drilled in joists no larger than one-third of joist width and at least 2 inches from the top and bottom of the joist to the edge of the hole. For multiple holes, the distance between the holes must be 2 times the diameter of the larger hole. The hole can be drilled at least 1 inch from the end of the joists to the edge of the hole. Holes, openings in joists, beams. When routing cables through metal posts, a snap-in sleeve must be used in each post. Installing cables. All cables must be installed and supported in a neat and professional manner so that the cable is not damaged during normal use of the building. Cables installed and run over beams. Through studs and in horizontal chases are usually naturally supported. NM, non-metallic sheathed cable, Romex cable. Non-metallic sheathed, NM Romex, cable shall be supported and secured with staples, cable ties, straps, hangers or similar hardware and installed in such a way as not to damage the cable. Approved supports, listed, for NM cable. Staples, cable stackers, cable ties, etc. Requirements for installation and support NM non-metallic sheathed cable, Romex cable. The distance between the supports shall not exceed 4.5 feet. The support from the enclosures, outlet box, shall not exceed 12 inches. After the cable enters the outlet box, 
The cable must be approximately 12 to 18 inches long after entering the junction box for splicing cable connection. If staples are used as cable supports, the staples must be approved to support NM cables. The NM cable must be stapled on a flat surface, not on the edge. Do not drive the staples too hard into the cables. Staples should be drive tight enough to hold the cable in place, but not so tight as to pinch and damage the cable. Driving the staple too hard can damage the cable. Can damage the cable. Do not drive the staple over the staple during the stapling another cable in same place. The staple must contact the cable with its flat surface, not a sharp edge. The cable must not be stapled closer than one and a quarter inch from the edge of the stud. No more than two cables can be stapled with the same staple. Do not damage the cable when removing the staple. If it is not possible to staple the cable, too narrow space, a cable tie or other way of supporting the cable should be used. The low voltage cable must not occupy the same cable hole as the power cable, it must be run in a separate drilled hole. Cable Stackers The edge of the cable stapled in the center of the 2 by 4 inches stud must be 1 and a quarter inch from the edge of the post. Otherwise use hangers, stackers, etc. to support this cable. If there are more than two cables running along a 2 by 4 inches stud, use cable stackers, etc. to keep the cables away from the stud. 7 8 inch hole for cable. Up to 3, 12 or 14 AWG, NM cables per drilled 7 8 inch hole in the 2 by 4 inches stud. Steel cable protection plate, nail plate, Use a nail plate to protect the cable if necessary. Installation of wiring in the bedroom from Example 1 Cable routing Example 1 plan Duplex receptacles, switchable center light outlet, smoke detector in the bedroom, carbon monoxide and smoke detector near the sleeping area. For better understanding, this plan will be converted and show the location of junction boxes to show the installation of cables between these boxes. Bedroom plan after conversion to show the location of the junction boxes. 14, 2 and 14, 3 nm non-metallic, Romex, sheathed cable will be used for bedroom electrical wiring. The bedroom does not need to be wired with thicker cable than required by the NEC standard. A larger cable takes up more space in junction boxes and is more difficult to splice and connect to electrical devices. It creates costs, not benefits. Do not mix wire sizes in one circuit. According to NEC code of 14, 2, a 15 amps cable must be protected by a 15 amps circuit breaker unless, with exceptions in the code, it is only used for motor load. The 14, 2 cable contains bare, white, and black wire. The 14, 3 cable contains bare, white, black and red wire. 
The entire room, including smoke detectors, can be wired and powered from the same circuit if there is no wired, interconnected, fire alarm system in the home. In a house that already has a wired, interconnected, fire alarm system, the smoke detector and carbon monoxide, smoke detector must be connected, wired, to the system. The National Electrical Code does not require a specific number of electrical outlets on a single circuit, but virtually homes have 10 to 15 outlets on a single circuit. Use 14. 2 cable to install as power, feeder, cable and cable between junction boxes. Route the power, feeder, cable to one, any, of the installed junction boxes. The power cable can be run directly from the panel board, best option, a junction box, switch, outlet, with the same cable gauge in another room, or if the power cable that previously powered this bedroom was left after gutting the room. In this example, the power cable is routed to a receptacle outlet box near the door, power, feeder, cable from panel board, junction box elsewhere, or left if the room has been gutted. Route the cable from point to point, best chosen during installation, until all electrical boxes are connected together. As an example, the cable is routed as follows. To the next receptacle outlet box. And next. And next. And next and next and to the switch box if the house does not have a wired interconnected alarm system the alarm detectors will be powered from the same circuit as the entire bedroom install the 14 3 nm romex cable between the smoke detector junction box and the carbon monoxide smoke detector junction box if your home has a wired interconnected fire alarm system do not run a cable from the switch, or receptacle, junction box to the fire alarm smoke detector junction box. Instead of powering the smoke detector from the room, install a Romex 14, 3 nm cable, or the same size cable as the existing fire alarm system, from any existing fire detector junction box to one of the new detector junction boxes. Cable from the house's interconnected fire protection system. Install the 14 3 nm Romex cable, or the same size cable as the existing fire alarm system, between the smoke detector junction box and the carbon monoxide smoke detector junction box. Run the cable between the switch box and the light outlet box. It can be a 14, 2 or 14, 3 cable. The ceiling light junction box must already be fan ready, so to be able to control the fan and lights with a separate switch, double switch, without the fan remote, a 14, 3 cable, not required, for future fan installation is the best solution. This bedroom will have a light fixture in the middle of the room, so a 14, 2 cable is installed. When installing cables, the volume of the junction boxes must be taken into account. The wiring can be started from any junction box installed in this room. The cable must be long enough to be spliced, connected, inside the box. It should be 12 to 18 inches long when it enters the junction box. If necessary, protect the cable with a nail plate. The sheath, jacket, of the cable should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, electrical box, not less than one quarter inch. Do not overfill junction boxes with cable with a cable sheath. The cable sheath not removed takes up space in the junction box that may be needed for splicing and device installation. To avoid electric shock and tripping of the circuit breaker, Make sure that the insulation of the wires, conductors, is not damaged, cut, with a knife when removing the insulation from the wires.
Cable splicing. Cables in junction boxes must be spliced before the initial inspection. Splicing is the joining of two or more separate wires, conductors. The grounding conductors must always be connected to each other to form one equipotential bonding. The wire nuts will be used as splicing connectors. All types of wire nuts are listed for a specific number of wires that can be spliced together with a specific type of wire nut. Any wire nut can be used to splice, connect, the ground wires, but a special green wire nut, ground connector, will be used in this example. The green wire nut has a hole on one end that is used to pull one of the bare wires through it, which will become a pigtail on the ground wires to the equipment ground terminals. When splicing the wire, it is enough to make three to five twists of the wire when the wire nut is tightly screwed on the wire. Do not twist the wire too much up to the cable sheath, as this may damage the insulation of other wires. Separate the ground wires, bare, from the others and push the ground wires towards the back of the junction box. Twist the ground wires. Hold them in your fist. This gives you a minimum length of 6 inches from the box entrance, required, and cut the shorter wire at the front of your fist. Pull the long wire through the green wire nut hole and twist it clockwise. Neatly fold and push the spliced ground wires with the connector into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the junction box. When using a standard wire nut to connect the ground wires, add a pigtail that is needed to connect the ground wire to the electrical device. Separate the ground wires, bare, from the others and push the ground wires towards the back of the junction box. Hold the ground wires in your fist, this gives you a minimum length of 6 inches from the box entrance, required, and cut them at the front of your fist. Take a piece of bare, ground, wire to make a pigtail and using pliers twist the wires together clockwise. Use a wire nut to secure the connection. Neatly fold and push the spliced ground wires with the connector into the junction box, leaving the wire nut pigtail outside the junction box. A medium-sized wire nut will be used for all other connections. This wire nut can also be used to connect ground wires. A better connection is obtained by twisting the wire with pliers before screwing the wire nut onto the twisted wires. Do not twist the insulated wires too tightly to avoid damaging the insulation. Separate the neutral, white, wires from the black ones, fold and push the wires towards the back of the junction box, hold them. Grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Take a piece of white wire to make the pigtail. Strip the end of that wire and also strip the ends of the white wires coming out of the junction box about one half inch. Using pliers and a wire nut, connect the pigtail and other white wires together. Fold the spliced white wires with the connector and neatly push them into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the box. Cable Conductors Colors Bare Copper, G, Ground Wire, Conductor, 
Ground wire may be green or green with yellow stripes in other cables. White, N, neutral wire, conductor. Black, H, hot, power, wire, conductor. Red, H, hot, power, wire, conductor. Splicing of, receptacle outlet with a cable from the power source and two cables going to another outlet, three cables. Splicing, connection sketch. Spliced, connected, wires. Cable from the power source. Cables to other outlets. Staples to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box. Preparation, splicing, of three cables entering the junction box to connect the receptacle. Choose which ones and open the knockouts in the junction box for the cables. Insert the cables into the knockouts in the junction box and staple them within 12 inches from the junction box. The cables should be between 12 and 18 inches long when they enter the junction box. Remove the jacket from the cables. The sheath, jacket, of the cables should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Separate the ground wires, bare, 
from the others and push the ground wires towards the back of the junction box. Twist the ground wires. Hold with your fist. This gives you a minimum length of 6 inches from the box entrance, required, and cut the shorter wires at the front of your fist, leaving the longest one. Pull the long wire through the green wire nut hole and twist it clockwise. Neatly fold and push the spliced ground wires with the connector into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the junction box. Separate the neutral, white, wires from the black ones, fold and push the wires towards the back of the junction box, hold them. Grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Take a piece of white wire to make the pigtail. Strip the end of that wire and also strip the ends of the white wires coming out of the junction box about one half inch. Using pliers and a wire nut, connect the pigtail and other white wires together. Fold the spliced white wires with the connector and neatly push them into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the box. Group the remaining hot, black, wires, fold and push the wires towards the back of the junction box, hold them, grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Take a piece of black wire to make the pigtail, strip the end of that wire and also strip the ends of the black wires coming out of the junction box about one half inch. Using pliers and a wire nut, connect the pigtail and other black wires together. Fold the spliced black wires with the connector and neatly push them into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the box. Group all the pigtail wires left outside the junction box. Fold and push the wires towards the back of the junction box, hold them, grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Fold the wires and neatly push them into the junction box. Splicing of receptacle outlet with a cable from the power source or another outlet and another cable going to another outlet, two cables. Splicing, connection sketch. Spliced, connected, wires. Cable from the power source or another outlet. Cable to another outlet. Staple to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box. Preparation, splicing, of two cables entering the junction box to connect the receptacle. Choose which ones and open the knockouts in the junction box for the cables.
Insert the cables into the knockouts in the junction box and staple them within 12 inches from the junction box. The cables should be between 12 and 18 inches long when they enter the junction box. Remove the jacket from the cables. The sheath, jacket, of the cables should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Separate the ground wires, bare, from the others and push the ground wires towards the back of the junction box. Twist the ground wires. Hold them in your fist. This gives you a minimum length of 6 inches from the box entrance, required, and cut the shorter wire at the front of your fist. Pull the long wire through the green wire nut hole and twist it clockwise. Neatly fold and push the spliced ground wires with the connector into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the junction box. Push the remaining wires into the junction box, grab and hold them, then cut them at the front of your fist. Fold the wires and neatly push them into the junction box. Splicing of Receptacle outlet with a cable from the power source or another outlet, one cable. Splicing, connection sketch. Cable sheath removed. Cable from the power source or another outlet. Staple to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box. Preparation of one cable coming into the junction box to connect the receptacle. Open the knockout in the junction box. Insert the cable into the knockout in the junction box and staple the cable within 12 inches from the box. The cable should be between 12 and 18 inches long when it enters the junction box. Strip the cable jacket. The cable sheath, jacket, should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter of inch. Push the wires into the junction box, hold them in place. Grab all the wires and cut them at the front of your fist. Fold the wires and neatly push them into the junction box. Splicing the switch outlet from the example where there is a wired, interconnected alarm system in the house. Splicing of single pole switch outlet with a cable from the power source or another outlet and another cable going to light outlet two cables splicing connection sketch spliced connected wires cable from the power source or another outlet cable to light outlet staple to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box Preparation, splicing, of two cables entering the junction box to connect the single pole switch. 
Choose which ones and open the knockouts in the junction box for the cables. Insert the cables into the knockouts in the junction box and staple them within 12 inches from the junction box. The cables should be between 12 and 18 inches long when they enter the junction box. Remove the jacket from the cables. The sheath, jacket, of the cables should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Separate the ground wires, bare, from the others and push the ground wires towards the back of the junction box. Twist the ground wires. Hold them in your fist. This gives you a minimum length of 6 inches from the box entrance, required, and cut the shorter wire at the front of your fist. Pull the long wire through the green wire nut hole and twist it clockwise. Neatly fold and push the spliced ground wires with the connector into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the junction box. Push all the wires, including the pigtail wire, into the junction box, grab them and hold them, then cut them at the front of your fist. Separate the white, neutral, wires from the others and strip the ends of those wires about one half inch. Using pliers and a wire nut, connect the white wires together. Neatly fold and push the spliced neutral wires with the connector into the junction box. Fold the remaining wires and neatly push them into the junction box. Splicing of light outlet with a cable from the switch outlet, one cable. Splicing connection sketch. Cable sheath removed. 14. 2 cable from the switch outlet. Staple to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box. Remove the cable sheath. Cut the wires to the desired length, not less than 6 inches. Insert the wires into the junction box. Temporarily cover the wires in the junction box with the supplied cover. Splicing of smoke detector outlet with a cable to the smoke detector carbon monoxide detector in front of the bedroom entrance one cable splicing connection sketch cable sheath removed 14 three cable to the smoke detector carbon monoxide detector staple to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box 
preparation, splicing, of one cable entering the junction box to connect the alarm detector. Open the knockout in the junction box. Insert the cable into the knockout in the junction box and staple the cable within 12 inches from the box. The cable should be between 12 and 18 inches long when it enters the junction box. Strip the cable jacket. The cable sheath, jacket, should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Push the wires into the junction box, hold them in place. Grab all the wires and cut them at the front of your fist. Fold the wires and neatly push them into the junction box. Splicing of smoke carbon monoxide detector outlet with a cable from the bedroom smoke detector and a second cable to any detector of the existing wired interconnected house alarm system two wires splicing connection sketch spliced connected wires 14 three cable from the smoke detector 14 3 cable to any detector of the existing alarm system. Staple to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box. Preparation, splicing, of 3 cables, 1 cable from power source and 2 cables to alarm detectors, entering the junction box to connect the alarm detector. Remove the jacket from the cables. The sheath, jacket, of the cables should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Fold and push all the wires towards the back of the junction box, hold them. Grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Separate the ground, bare, wires from the others and use pliers and a wire nut to connect them together.
Insert the spliced ground wires into the junction box. Separate the hot, black, wires from the others. Strip the ends of the wires about one half inch, splice them with a wire nut, then insert the spliced wires into the junction box. Separate the neutral, white, wires from the others, strip the ends of the wires about one half inch, splice them with a wire nut, then insert the spliced wires into the junction box. Splice the red wires together, then insert the spliced wires into the junction box. Splicing the switch outlet from the example where the smoke detector is powered from the switch outlet as shown in the wiring diagram earlier, no wired interconnected house alarm system. Splicing of single pole switch outlet with a cable from the power source or another outlet, a second cable to the smoke detector outlet and a cable going to the light outlet, three cables. Splicing, connection sketch spliced, connected, wires, cable from the power source or another outlet, cable to another outlet, cable to the light outlet, staples to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box. Preparation, splicing, of three cables entering the junction box to connect the single pole switch. Choose which ones and open the knockouts in the junction box for the cables. Insert the cables into the knockouts in the junction box and staple them within 12 inches from the junction box. The cables should be between 12 and 18 inches long when they enter the junction box.
Mark the cable that goes to the light outlet. Remove the jacket from the cables. The sheath, jacket, of the cables should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Separate the ground wires, bare, from the others and push the ground wires towards the back of the junction box. Twist the ground wires. Hold with your fist. This gives you a minimum length of 6 inches from the box entrance, required and cut the shorter wires at the front of your fist, leaving the longest one. Pull the long wire through the green wire nut hole and twist it clockwise. Neatly fold and push the spliced ground wires with the connector into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the junction box. Separate the neutral, white, wires from the black ones, fold and push the wires towards the back of the junction box, hold them. Grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Strip the ends of the white wires about one half inch and use pliers and a wire nut to splice the wires together. Fold the spliced white wires with the connector and neatly push them into the junction box. Separate the black wire from the light outlet cable and set it aside. Group the remaining hot, black, wires. Fold and push the wires towards the back of the junction box. Hold them, grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Take a piece of black wire to make the pigtail. Strip the end of that wire and also strip the ends of the black wires coming out of the junction box about one half inch. Using pliers and a wire nut, connect the pigtail and other black wires together. Fold the spliced black wires with the connector and neatly push them into the junction box, leaving the pigtail outside the box. Group all the wires left outside the junction box. Fold and push the wires towards the back of the junction box. Hold them, grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Fold the wires and neatly push them into the junction box. Splicing of Smoke detector outlet with a cable from the switch outlet and a 14.3 cable to the carbon monoxide smoke detector outlet in front of the bedroom entrance, two cables. Splicing, connection sketch. Spliced, connected, wires. 14.2 cable from the switch outlet. 14.3 cable to the carbon monoxide smoke detector outlet.
staple to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box. Preparation, splicing, of three cables, one cable from power source and two cables to alarm detectors, entering the junction box to connect the alarm detector. Remove the jacket from the cables. The sheath, jacket, of the cables should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Fold and push all the wires towards the back of the junction box, hold them. Grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Separate the ground, bare, wires from the others and use pliers and a wire nut to connect them together. Insert the spliced ground wires into the junction box. Separate the hot, black, wires from the others. Strip the ends of the wires about one half inch, splice them with a wire nut, then insert the spliced wires into the junction box. Separate the neutral, white, wires from the others, strip the ends of the wires about one half inch, splice them with a wire nut, then insert the spliced wires into the junction box.
Splice the red wires together, then insert the spliced wires into the junction box. Splicing of carbon monoxide smoke detector outlet with a 14. Three cable from the smoke detector outlet in the bedroom, one cable. Splicing connection sketch. Cable sheath removed. 14. Three cable from the smoke detector. Staple to secure and support the cables no more than 12 inches from the entrance to the junction box. Preparation, splicing, of one cable entering the junction box to connect the alarm detector. Open the knockout in the junction box. Insert the cable into the knockout in the junction box and staple the cable within 12 inches from the box. The cable should be between 12 and 18 inches long when it enters the junction box. Strip the cable jacket. The cable sheath jacket should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Push the wires into the junction box, hold them in place. Grab all the wires and cut them at the front of your fist. Fold the wires and neatly push them into the junction box. Bedroom wiring spliced and ready for inspection. After inspection and approval by the competent authority, the final electrical installation can be carried out. Installation of electrical devices Receptacle installation Duplex receptacle decora and standard style front view All receptacles installed in residential applications must be of the tamper-resistant type Rear view of the duplex receptacle Receptacle yoke, frame Push-in terminals the push-in connection is not recommended for receptacles, especially those with high current consumption, due to poor connection, which may cause damage to the device, overheating, burning. Receptacle mounting screws. Grounding screw, green. Neutral screws, silver. Hot screws, gold. A properly spliced receptacle outlet should have three or Five leads, wires, for connection to a receptacle device. Do not connect more than two wires to the back of the receptacle. Instead, splice the wires properly before connecting to the receptacle. When attaching the receptacle to the junction box, pay attention to the gap between the top of the junction box and the surface of the installed drywall. The gap between the drywall surface and the top of the installed box housing must not be greater than one quarter inch. Box extender with attachment screws. 
If the gap between the drywall surface and the top of the installed box housing is greater than one quarter inch, a box extension must be installed. The gap between the non-combustible surface around the boxes should not be greater than one eighth inch. If the gap is greater than one eighth inch, the drywall must be repaired. The receptacle yoke, frame, must rest on the mounted drywall so that the receptacle can be firmly attached to the junction box. If receptacle yoke, frame, cannot adhere firmly to the drywall face, too large gap between the drywall and the junction box, a spacer must be used between the receptacle yoke and the junction box to properly secure the receptacle. Outlet spacer Outlet spacer made of wire nut the spacer is installed between the receptacle yoke and the junction box so that the bottom of the yoke matches the face height of the drywall. Install a box extension if needed. The gap between the drywall surface and the top of the installed box casing is greater than one quarter inch. Install the duplex receptacle. Installation of the receptacle on the outlet box with three wires prepared for connecting the receptacle. Splicing, connection sketch. Ground wire. Ground wire connected to the receptacle, green screw. Neutral wire. Neutral wire connected to the receptacle, silver screw. Hot wire. Hot wire connected to the receptacle, gold screw. Installation of the duplex receptacle to the three wires coming out of the junction box. Pull the spliced wires out of the junction box. Strip the ends of the wires about one half inch and make a loop in the ends of all the wires. Connect the ground, bare, wire to the ground, green screw, terminal of the receptacle. Connect the neutral, white, wire to the neutral terminal, silver screw, of the receptacle. Connect the hot, black, wire to the hot terminal, gold screw, of the receptacle. Fold the wires. Push them neatly into the junction box and attach the receptacle to this junction box. Level the receptacle. Attach the receptacle wall plate. Installation of the receptacle on the outlet box with five wires prepared for connecting the receptacle. Splicing, connection sketch. Ground wire. Ground wire connected to the receptacle, green screw. Neutral wires. Neutral wires connected to the receptacle, silver screws. Hot wires. Hot wires connected to the receptacle, gold screws. Installation of the duplex receptacle to the five wires coming out of the junction box. 
Pull the spliced wires out of the junction box. Strip the ends of the wires about one half inch and make a loop in the ends of all the wires. Connect the ground, bare, wire to the ground, green screw, terminal of the receptacle. Connect the neutral, white, wires to the neutral terminals, silver screws, of the receptacle. Connect the hot, black, wires to the hot terminals, gold screws, of the receptacle. Fold the wires. Push them neatly into the junction box and attach the receptacle to this junction box. Level the receptacle. Attach the receptacle wall plate. Single Pole Switch Installation Single Pole Switch Decora and Standard Style Front View Rear View of the Single Pole Switch Switch Yoke, Frame Switch Mounting Screws Push-In Terminals Grounding Screw, Green Hot Screws, Gold Install a Single Pole Switch Splicing, connection sketch. A single pole switch outlet have three leads, wires, for connection to a switching device. Ground wire. Ground wire connected to the switch, green screw. Hot wire to the light fixture. Hot wire to light fixture connected to any of the two switch terminals, gold screws. Hot wire. Hot wire connected to any of the two switch terminals, gold screws. When attaching the switch to the junction box, pay attention to the gap between the top of the junction box and the surface of the installed drywall. Same rules and restrictions apply as for a receptacle. Installation of the single pole switch to the wires coming out of the junction box. Pull the spliced wires out of the junction box. Strip the ends of the wires about one half inch and make a loop on the ground wire. If required by the NEC code, install a box extender. Connect the ground, bare, wire to the ground, green, screw. Connect the two hot, black, wires to either of the two hot, gold, screws.
Fold the wires. Push them neatly into the junction box and attach the switch to the junction box. Level the switch. Attach the switch wall plate. Installation of lighting fixtures Splicing, connection sketch The light outlet usually has three leads, wires Ground wire Ground, bare, wire of the light fixture connected to the ground, bare, wire from the junction box Neutral wire Neutral white wire of the light fixture connected to the neutral white wire from the junction box hot wire hot black wire of the light fixture connected to the hot black wire from the junction box the drywall around the fan junction box must be repaired installation of a ceiling light fixture for surface mounting Better Homes and Gardens Surface Mount Light Fixture Light Fixture Package Includes Light Fixture Main Body Light Fixture Lens Lens Ring Lens Ring Support Nuts Light Bulbs Wire Nuts Screws securing the main body of the light fixture to the junction box. Turn off the power and install the light fixture. Strip ends of the wire about one half inch. Pre-install the supplied screws to secure the main body of the light fixture to the junction box. Using the supplied wire nut, connect the bare equipment ground wire to the bare ground wire from the junction box. Connect the neutral, white, wires from the light fixture to the neutral, white, wire from the junction box. Connect the hot, black, wires from the light fixture to the hot, black, wire from the junction box. Insert the connected wires into the junction box. Lift the light fixture to the pre-installed mounting screws in the junction box. Align the screws with the mounting holes in the main body of the fixture, rotate the fixture until the screws hold it. Tighten the screws. Install the light bulbs. Lens ring support bolts. Put the light fixture lens on top of the ring. Lift the ring up to the mounting bolts. Align the holes in the ring with the bolts and secure the ring with the supplied nuts. Restore power. Smoke detector and carbon monoxide, smoke detector installation. The smoke detector and the carbon monoxide, smoke detector are installed in the same way. Only the detectors differ internally in the way they detect the threat. Installing a smoke and carbon monoxide, smoke detector. Splicing, connection sketch. The alarm detector outlet has three leads, wires, for connecting to the alarm detector. Ground wire, spliced, inside the junction box. Neutral wire. Neutral, white, wire of the alarm detector quick connector connected to the neutral, white wire from the junction box. Interconnection wire, transmits signal between alarms. 
Interconnection, red, wire of the alarm detector quick connector connected to the interconnection, red, wire from the junction box. Hot wire. Hot, black, wire of the alarm detector quick connector connected to the hot, black, wire from the junction box. KIDA or similar hardwired smoke detector installation. The KIDA smoke alarm kit includes Detector Trim ring, mounting plate Power quick connector Dust cover Instruction Disconnect the power supply by turning off the breaker supplying the detector junction box. Pre-install the screws in the junction box that will support the detector mounting plate. Install power quick connector for the detector. Remove the insulator from the red wire of the power quick connector and connect this wire to the red wires from the junction box. The red wire from the quick connector is not used when the detector is powered as a single detector, only one detector, not the interconnected alarm system. Connect the black wire from the power quick connector to the black, hot wires from the junction box. Connect the white wire from the power quick connector to the white, neutral, wires from the junction box. Install a box extension if necessary, the gap between the drywall surface and the outlet box is deeper than one quarter inch. Install the detector mounting plate. The mounting screws must be in the narrow ends of the mounting holes before tightening the screws. Align the contacts of the power connector plug and the detector socket, and then connect by pressing the quick connector into the detector socket until it locks. Insert the wires into the electrical box and mount the detector on the mounting plate by turning it clockwise until it clicks into place. Press the test button and test the smoke detector.
Restore power. When the detector is powered up and the green light is on, retest the device to make sure it is working properly. Protect the detector from dust if necessary, during construction. The detector will not detect gases when covered. Power supply to the bedroom. Power supply to the bedroom from the panel board. Installation of a new circuit to power the bedroom in the load center, panel board, distribution center. All bedroom outlets and circuits must be arc fault protected. AFCI arc fault circuit interrupter. Main load center. Power buses. Neutral, ground buses. Plug on neutral buses. Main breaker. Branch circuit breakers. Load center bonding screw. Only one neutral conductor can be terminated under same screw. More than one wire of the same size can be terminated under the same screw if the ground bar is listed for such termination. The circuit breaker must be approved for the load center where it will be installed. AFCI, Arc Fault Circuit Interrupter, Circuit Breaker with Pigtail Wire. Breaker Handle. Test Button. Neutral Terminal. Hot Terminal. Pigtail Wire. Plug on Neutral AFCI Breaker. Plug on neutral AFCI circuit breaker connection plug to neutral bar. To use a plug on neutral circuit breaker, the load center must have a neutral bus that accepts these breakers. The neutral spring clip of the circuit breaker is inserted onto the neutral bus bar. The circuit breaker must be properly sized for the circuit capacity and cable size. For 14.2 cable, the correct breaker size is 15 amps. Electricity is dangerous. Accidentally touching any live parts of the load center can cause sparks and electric shock, which can be fatal. Always disconnect power to the load center by turning off the main breaker whenever possible. After turning off the main breaker, there is still voltage on the breaker terminals and in the service cable. Before unscrewing and removing the neutral wire from the neutral bus, always turn off the circuit breaker to avoid sparking an electric shock. The neutral carries power back to the load center panel board, so it gets hot when not grounded. The circuit cable from the bedroom is already routed near the panel board. Installing an AFCI, arc fault circuit interrupter, in an existing panel board, load center. Turn off the main breaker or the feeder breaker for the sub-panel. This video was taken on a live panel board, but for amateur DIY work, to avoid electric shock, always turn off the power to the entire panel by turning off the main breaker. Remove the panel cover. Danger! To install a new circuit in an existing panel, load center you will most likely be working near exposed electrical parts of the panel live. Electricity is dangerous. Accidentally touching any live parts of the load center can cause sparks and electric shock, which can be fatal. Always disconnect power to the panel or sub-panel before starting work, if possible. Open the selected knockout in the panel board enclosure.
Insert the cable connector into the open knockout. Insert the cable into the connector and fasten the cable, usually a staple, 12 inches from the panel board. Strip the cable jacket. Route the ground wire, bare copper conductor. Neatly inside the load center panel board and connect it to the neutral ground bar in the panel. Install the AFCI circuit breaker. Connect, terminate, the pigtail wire from the circuit breaker to the neutral, ground bus. Apply power to the panel and test the installed circuit breaker for proper operation. Turn off the power. Route the neutral, white, wire, conductor, inside the panel board. Trim it, strip the end of the wire about one half inch and connect it to the neutral terminal screw of the circuit breaker.
Route the hot, black, wire, conductor, inside the panel board, trim it, strip the end of the wire about one half inch and connect it to the hot terminal screw of the circuit breaker. Power up the panel and test the circuit breaker with the connected circuit for proper operation. Remove the knockout and panel board cover for the installed circuit breaker. Reinstall the panel board cover. Mark, describe the installed circuit breaker. Attach the test instruction and the test reminder label supplied with the AFCI switch in a visible position on the enclosure. If this video is helpful, please subscribe. Comments are welcome. Power supply to the bedroom from the junction box elsewhere. When the power cable is taken from an outlet in another room, replace the outlet with an AFCI type and power the bedroom through it to get the required AFCI protection in the new bedroom. Power supply to the bedroom from the cable left after the room has been gutted. When the power cable is left after the room has been gutted, an AFCI type receptacle should be installed in the first outlet in the bedroom and used to power the bedroom to ensure the required protection of the entire room. AFCI, GFCI receptacle Test and reset buttons Receptacle status light Receptacle description AFCI, Arc Fault Circuit Interrupter, GFCI, Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter, AFGF, Arc Fault, Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter, Dual Function, Receptacle Yoke, Receptacle Mounting Screws, Rear View of the AFGF Receptacle, Grounding Screw, Green, Line Terminals, Load Terminals Line Neutral Screw, Silver Line Hot Screw, Gold Load Neutral Screw, Silver Load Hot Screw, Gold Installation of AFCI, Arc Fault Circuit Interrupter, to provide AFCI protection for circuit extension. With the power cable left in the gutted room, Install the AFCI receptacle in the outlet where the power cable enters. Splicing, connection sketch. Cable from the power source. Cables to other outlets. To ground screw. Ground, bare, wire connected to ground, green, screw. To line terminals. Power neutral, white, wire connected to line receptacle terminal, silver, screw. Power hot, black, wire connected to line receptacle terminal, gold, screw. Power, line, wires connected to power, line, receptacle terminals. 
to load terminals. Load hot, black, wire connected to the load receptacle terminal, gold, screw. Load neutral, white, wire connected to the load receptacle terminal, silver, screw. Load wires connected to load receptacle terminals. Replacing the duplex receptacle with an AFCI, arc fault circuit interrupter, to provide AFCI protection for circuit extension. Disconnect the power to the receptacle and remove the receptacle wall plate. Remove the receptacle from the outlet box. Bring the cable from the new extended circuit. Open any available knockout in the junction box. Insert the cable into the knockout and staple the cable within 12 inches from the junction box. The cables should be between 12 and 18 inches long when they enter the junction box. Remove the jacket from the cables. The sheath, jacket, of the cables should protrude beyond the entrance to the enclosure, junction box, not less than one quarter inch. Disconnect all wires and remove the receptacle device. Splice the ground wire from the added cable to the existing spliced ground wires. Take a piece of white wire to make the pigtail and splice it to the neutral, white, wires from the existing receptacle.
Take a piece of black wire to make the pigtail and splice it to the hot, black, wires from the existing receptacle. Group all the wires, fold and push the wires towards the back of the junction box. Hold them, grab them and cut them in front of your fist. Strip the ends of the wires about one half inch. Connect the ground, bare, wire to the ground, green, screw of the receptacle. Connect the neutral, white, wire from the power source to the line neutral, silver, screw of the receptacle. Connect the hot, black, wire from the power source to the line hot, gold, screw of the receptacle. Remove the yellow sticker covering the connection screws on the load side of the receptacle device. Connect the hot, black, wire from the cable to the new circuit extension to the load hot, gold, screw of the receptacle. Connect the neutral, white, wire from the cable to the new circuit extension to the load neutral, silver, screw of the receptacle. Neatly fold and push the wires into the junction box. Use a screwdriver to make sure the wires are not loose. Attach the receptacle to the junction box. Make sure the receptacle is level. Install the receptacle wall plate, restore power and test the installed receptacle for proper operation. If this video is helpful please subscribe. Comments are welcome. Power the bedroom and test all installed electrical devices for proper operation. Alternative installation of lighting in bedrooms according to the requirements of the NEC code shown in examples 2, 3 and 4 in the next video. Also additional bedroom wiring in the next video.